So um, building up from the information uh, from Steve, Ed, and Russell, I'll give a case study for uh, quantitative adverse outcome pathway uh, with aromatase inhibition AOP. So moving from uh, adverse outcome pathway to quantitative adverse outcome pathway, AOP defines uh, association between a molecular initiating event and an adverse outcome. The uh, quantitative adverse outcome pathway designed to provide quantitative information for dose response and time course uh, predictions. So for AOP, it defines molecular initiating event, key events, and adverse effect. But for QAOP, we we'll need information uh, related to dose symmetry in order to uh, start driving the, driving the program to perform predictions. Here, uh, we show that the QAOP is a combination of linked quantitative model so we have uh, we utilize the same framework, but we have the we have three linked model. Start with HPG access model, where it describes the molecular initiating event of aromatase inhibition, followed by several key events such as um, pr the production of estradiol and vitaligen and, and the concentration in uh, plasma. And using the output from HPG access model with metallogen and concentration in the plasma. This is the input for our oocycle's dynamic model. And the model will perform prediction for the ovulation and spawning behavior. And with the output of oocycle's dynamic model, population the dynamic model will perform prediction for population trajectory. So I'll talk uh, about the three models and how they link together. Start with the HPG access model. This is the diagram for Fehamino HPG access model. The chemical enters through uh, the gill compartment in the, for the fish body and distribute through the bloodstream where it reaches to the um, target site that we use of uh, we use the model chemical fatorazole here, where fatorazole binds to aromatase and inhibit the conversion from testosterone to estradiol. Then the fish body sends reduced concentration of estradiol, which um, the model described that there will be regulatory hormone LHFSH release in the uh, from the brain, where. LHFSH can stimulate the synthesis of uh, aromatase messenger RNA. This is the regulatory loop that we describe in the computational model. And also, estradiol will circulate in the bloodstream where the uh, reach to the liver, and estradiol binds to estrogen receptor to drive the production of vitaligen. And as mentioned earlier, vitaligen is a important egg yolk precursor to support egg development. And here is some data that uh, predict from the computational model that we have effect of aromatase inhibition on venous estradiol. The four figure has the same axis where the X axis time and the Y axis is plasma estradiol. The squares are laboratory observation and the lines are model prediction. Figure A is the control data, while figure B are fish exposed to low dose fat result with 0.5 microgram per liter. The laboratory observation shows similar level of estradiol, while the model predict a small reduction uh, when they exposed to the chemical. And figure C, this uh, shows middle dose exposure for fish exposed to fatrazol uh, with three microgram per liter. The model does not fully, the model describes the reduction during exposure period. And once the exposure ends at day eight, there is a high level recovery observed from the laboratory, which is not fully described in the model. And figure D is high level exposure 
for fish exposed to 30 micrograms per liter of the chemical, the exposure induce a high, high level uh, reduction for estradiol. And once the chemical is removed at day eight, a recovery phase was observed and described in the model. Oops. <laughs> also um, here we show effect of aromatase inhibition on venous vitalogenin. The fig they, again, there are four figures actually. <laughs> but um, they have the same axis where the x-axis is time and y-axis is vitalogen and concentration in the plasma. The, the circle are, uh, are laboratory observation while the lines are model predictions. Figure A is the control data and figure B again is the same, under the same format where fish exposed to low dose fatrazole uh, with 0.5 microgram per liter. And we can focus on figure C, where fish exposed to middle dose fat result with three microgram per liter. Um, the, the exposure induced high level of vitalogen and reduction at around day four. And once the chemical is removed, a slow recovery was observed from the laboratory. And the model does not fully describe this part of the observation. Also, figure D is um, high-level fatrazole exposure for fish exposed to 30 microgram per liter of fatrazole. The exposure reduce, uh, induced high-level vat, uh, and re reduction around day two, and the, after the chemical was removed, a uh, slow recovery was observed up to 10 to 20 days. And we currently, this is our ongoing effort that we focus on describing this part of the data. Next is the OOSI growth dynamic model where it takes the output from HPG access model where it does, uh, with the vitalogen and concentration in the plasma and perform prediction for ovulation and spawning. So here is the diagram of the model. The model is developed by Dr. Karen Watanabe in Oregon Health and Science University. So in the model, it describes there's a pool of organia. They get periodically recruited for oocyte development. Once the egg is recruited in the, uh, for the, for the oocyte development, the driving force for egg to develop is the concentration of vitalogen in, in the plasma, which is the output from previous model. And once the egg grow to the critical size, the fish will release that clutch of the egg. So, and the model is a statistical model with a Monte Carlo uh, component in it. So you can see that each, um, the spawning interval and the clutch size here is, a, is not a fixed number. It actually calibrate against laboratory observation. And here are the model predictions for fecundity based on vitalogen and concentration. So again, we have the HPG access model perform predictions, uh, perform prediction for vitalogen and concentration as the input for this model and then figure A shows the prediction of normal fecundity compared to laboratory observation. In this figure, the x-axis is time in day, while the y-axis is the cumulative number of eggs. The blue squares with whiskers are model prediction, while the green squares are laboratory observation. So for control data, the the model prediction are pretty close to the laboratory observation. Now we'll look at the effects of fat result on fecundity compared to laboratory result. In figure B, the x-axis is fat result concentration for control two and 10 microgram per liter, while the y-axis is average fecundity. And the box plot, the Red line is the medium, while the upper and lower 
edge is for the box is 70 and 25 percentile. The whiskers are the maximum value excluding the outlier. The green dots are laboratory observations, while the red, uh, red cross is the outlier. So in this part of the model, we can see that the model performed predictions that overlap with laboratory observations. At last, I will show a population dynamics model where the model is developed by Dr. David Miller in US EPA. This is the prediction of population dynamics where the model takes uh, the output from all site growth dynamic model under the exposure scenario and perform prediction for population trajectory. And the x-axis is time and year. The y-axis is population size. For fish exposed to fatrozol 2, 10, or 50 microgram per liter, as you can see, they would induce a significant reduction for fish population. So taken together, um, here we show that the aromatase inhibition, QAOP, is the link of the three model for HPG access model, OOSI growth dynamic model, and population dynamics model. So return on the investment, a fully developed QAOP will be a, pre, a, a pow, powerful predictive tool that we can design our uh, desired input exposure scenario and perform prediction uh, that based on the adverse outcome. However, um, the data, there are big data needs for each QA, each model development um, for from both laboratory observation, also from model development. And a mature QAOP will serve as in silico description for in vivo biology, in ter, uh, which also QA, in a way QAOP can perform in vivo in vivo in vitro extrapolation. So we like to ask ourselves, when the QAOP will be ready to support regula regulatory decision making? We think that the evidence of uh, the confidence in prediction provided by QAOP will be the key. Currently, the QAOP model development based on close collaboration between experimentalists and computational modeler working as an integrated team. And the mixture, so in our current on, uh, work ongoing effort, mixture toxicity predictions will be tested uh, experimentally for model refinement. And regulatory decision makers are likely to use the decision support tools that are most reliable and least uncertain. So the need to plan for evaluation of not only of confidence in the QAOP, but of the confidence in the QAOP relative to that for the decision support tools used in the absence of the QAOP. And the degree, also the degree of confidence that is needed will be application dependent. So in summary, um, we have I talk about the aromatase inhibition AOP and show a case study of QAOP as a link of three, three models that perform uh, population trajectory predictions. And we also working on, uh, we don't have time here to talk about it, but we also working on mixture study, utilize uh, toxicity equivalent uh, factor as our strategy to study the mixture study. And then uh, we also, I also address um, the consideration of the QAO, when the QAOB will be ready for regulatory decision making. So here is the, um, our collaborator, co collaboration group from both the Luth and also um, other modelers. <laughs>